Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our satisfactory 1.0 playthrough. In our last episode, we started work on a big power plant, 75 gigawatts of nuclear power, and that's not even utilizing any of the waste for plutonium power, which is something I can always do later if I really need more power. So, I've done a decent amount of work since the last episode, because there were a couple things we had talked about that I needed to get done. One of which is we needed Caterium to our main base because we're going to make the fixite ingots out of that and Sam. And then the other thing I wanted to do was build a electromagnetic control rod factory for the nuclear power, right? Because we aren't making the control rods over here and therefore we're going to need them. So what I went ahead and did is I, well, I learned a new fact that I didn't know before and this one's really important. Drones, do not just run incessantly. For some reason, I thought they had. I was I was wrong about that. I, I think I just assumed they did, or I maybe they did previously. But drones will actually not deliver, or they won't leave until their cargo is empty that they're trying to deliver. So that's actually really handy, because what that means, it actually, I'm curious if this guy ends up No, okay, so he's leaving again. So this would be a good example. If I add a few hundred more into the circulation, then he won't actually be going back and forth as often uh, for that same reason. So let me grab a few more fluid tanks here. Anyway, so the point is drones are far more efficient in terms of their fuel usage, but that makes them bad at delivering to multiple locations in a row. If either location backs up, that's problematic, right? Because then they'll be stuck waiting at the one that's backed up while the other one runs dry. So you really do want drones to just be point to point unless there's steady flow out on all the locations that they're delivering to. And then you have to care about rates, right? Because they might deliver too much to the first one if the first one's sinking. So you just need to be really careful with drones delivering to multiple places. But for point to point drones, they're actually quite efficient because they won't deliver when they don't need to. So all of that put together means I decided we're actually gonna do a fuel delivery drone system. So these drones are literally going to load up fuel. Um, so you can see into the outgoing slot, fuel is showing up. He's grabbing it as soon as it comes in. So I think that's why it's not showing up. But uh, he's gonna be delivering this to our electromagnetic magnetic control rod factory, which we'll go show you that real quick. I did put it together. Off stream, I figured it wouldn't be that crazy interesting because it really is just some smelters and assemblers and constructors. And it's actually really convenient. All the resources we needed were right in the same spot. So check this out. It was like, couldn't be more perfect. I can remember where it is. Uh, I guess it's right ahead according to the compass. What's up CCTV? How goes it? Ah oh, yeah, here we go. So yeah, basically the iron's there and the copper's there and the caterium's there. So everything we needed was right here to make electromagnetic control rods. I am using iron wire rather than copper wire. I don't, uh, I kind of did that automatically without thinking before I realized I needed copper sheets anyway. So I. I maybe could have done it differently, but here we are. We've got our miners going. Um, have I checked the rates? Am I getting enough? I need 300 copper ingots and deuterium. I needed 120 ingots, so this is actually perfect. Uh, and then copper, just gotta make sure I'm getting 300. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so then you can see those run into our smelters. This is the iron smelter line. We needed a lot. Um, and then copper and caterium smelters are over here. And then we're constructing uh, iron wire, two sets of constructors, and then a third set also using iron ingots to make iron uh, pipes. So that's what's going on here. And then those get sent around to make stators, which we have, I believe, nine assemblers going to make stators right now. And... Some of it's overkill. I think I only needed... Let's see, I have the numbers out here on the side. For staters, I needed... No, I needed nine assemblers. 900%. You just finished a slug hunting run and got 200 shards. Nice. 
D24 Gaming, how goes it? How goes it? I'm doing well. So yeah, anyway, we're making copper sheets here. Um, and then the Caterium ingots are going to make quick wire, which is here. And I may need to upgrade that. It seems like that's a mark. It's getting slowed down. Um, and then the quick wire and whatchamacallit get combined to make AI limiters. Okay, that should do. And then the AI limiters get combined with the stators to make electromagnetic control rods. So that's a thing. Uh, we'll have to discover if it's flowing properly, but I think there's a couple places I actually needed power shards, but I didn't have any. So we'll, we'll have to wait till we produce some. Um, so this will slightly underproduce for now, but we'll have to come back at some point to make sure it's not underproducing anymore. We should be getting exactly 30 uh, ECRs per minute. And I set up... Did I set up 9? Or 6? Uh, looks like I set up 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Yeah, yeah, okay. So we're good. So yeah, the place where I need some extra help is on the copper sheets. No, we're good on copper sheets. It's on the quick wire constructors. I need an extra four power shards on those. And I also need to make sure I connected. I found an issue in my blueprint for the constructors. This was a revised blueprint I was using um, because someone had showed me the trick or they mentioned the trick on the YouTube comment that you can get. This was outside the bounds of the 4x4x4 blueprint creator, but you're able to fit it just barely inside by using a floor hole kind of trick. And so I was able to figure out kind of a different solution. It's more or less the same idea though. Uh, but anyway, there was an issue with the blueprint where I forgot this belt back here, so. And it had some Mark Threes in it. It's a whole mess. What's up, Alor? Yeah, a little bit of a late stream for me, but it's the weekend, you know. Got a free evening, and I wanted to play. So anyway, this is gonna be our fuel input here. So I already named it ECR Factory Fuel Unload, and so then I just need to find Home Fuel Load A. Goes to this port, and this port goes to Home Fuel Load A. And that should do it. Wait a second. Oh, no, that would be a bad idea. I was just thinking we could have it just come here to pick up and then drop off the... Wait. Wait, can you do that? I never considered that. Can you fuel a drone in one place? Load it up with nothing, have it go to location A, pick up a thing, go to location B, drop off that thing, and then go to back to location home, where the fuel is. And as long as you're always able to drop off everything at the drop off location. Oh, but see, the problem is it. No, no, no. It waits until it drops off all the items. I was going to say the problem is then it continually loops and wastes fuel, but I think that would actually work out. I don't know. I think that works. Um, yeah, I think that actually works. I, I haven't done a three-point system before, but I guess that would actually work fine. So in this case, do I need to be bringing fuel at all? Or should I just send a drone from home where fuel already exists to pick up these, fly it over to the nuclear, and then fly back home and kind of do that loop. Which one's more efficient? I don't actually know. At the end of the day, they're probably similar. This one's probably less efficient, actually. And I have two drone depots running. But I like this version, so we're gonna do it. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's that. That's the ECR factory. I'll come back when I have some synthetic power shards, because that's what we're going to be working on here in a minute. But let's fly over to our nuclear plant. Make 
make sure that's all set up properly. Oh, no, I have to show you one more thing that we did. Uh, one more thing that we did, which is very important, is I added more train stuff. So this previously was our only train stop. And went ahead and added on to this T-junction. I think we're good on blocks. I should probably grab a couple block signals and here and there I should put one on the right. Uh, oh, nope, not like that. Please, please not like that. Um, just in case I have multiple trains at some point. That'll keep, keep them running. But yeah, over here is the Caterium that we wanted for the base that we're going to turn into, whatchamacallit, a uh, fix site. So here's our Caterium node. And then I was able to design in the Blueprint Creator a little R junction. It's not a T junction. It only goes one direction, but that actually works fine when the main base is always that way. So it basically goes, loads the Caterium onto the second thingy here, goes back and then can turn left. And it would never need to turn right unless I have the same train go that way to pick up more stuff, in which case I can add in, you know, the other turns, I guess. But at least for now, it's fine planning for multiple trains just before finishing the game. Yeah, you're right, probably not. Doggo, get off the tracks. You're not gonna make it if you stand there. Anyway, let us now go to our nuclear plant. Which is probably gonna be more than one flight away. because I have to get all this elevation. But what a nice view from up here. It also would be nice if I could grab a purple power slug or two. I need a few more... I need a few more shards, but we're so close to the, uh, the synthetic shard recipe. I, I did research it. Uh, that was after the episode was over. I researched it on stream. It's just the, the research in the MAM. It requires uh, 100 time crystals, which is just diamonds in the converter. And um, like 10 power shards, and I think that's pretty much it. So we researched that. No slug up here. And that'll be the next thing that we're working on. I probably got that hard drive, right? Looks like I got this one already. Oh yes, I certainly did. Go away, spiders. Ouch, you got me. Ah! I wish they would take fall damage. It would be really satisfying to see him splat on the ground. All right, here's that wonderful uranium belt we set up in the last stream. Uh, yeah, there is a massive... I don't know if it's the same one you're talking about, but I found... Oh, yellow slug. Take it. I found an insane amount of uh, purple slugs up here. This northern area, like all these little doodads. Uh, is there an enemy up here? Oh, there's an enemy up here. Whoops. Not a good place to stand and sit. Waskily still disapproves of this uranium belt, but it's going strong. <laughs> nothing wrong with it. Um, what is this? Get rid of those. No, but don't get rid of the pipeline. All right, well, there goes all our speed. So yeah, I did a little bit more building of the nuclear. We got it up to six of the plants. I still have nowhere near enough power shards. So we need lots of power shards to finish the nuclear build. Your diluted fuel is done. Nice. Diluted fuel is the truth. Love that stuff. 
Okay, so let me fix the ECR. Oh, look. Our fuel rods are backed up. Now, another thing we could do... Again, there's just so many options. Um... But let's see. This port needs to go to... Well, I need... ECR home load to have no port as a destination. And then I need this one to go ahead and leave. Yeah, get out of here. And don't come back. Um... And then... Oh, not do that. And then we need to set all ports. Um, ECR factory load comes here to nuclear unload, and nuclear unload goes to ECR factory load. So that's just a little loop of 3.3 kilometers. And that should work. Let's see if it does. Can I shove this back into the output? Now, the... Anyway, what I was going to say is we could make extra uranium fuel rods with some summer sloops, and then I could use those, you know, as fuel uh, for drones. But that seems kind of insane, to be honest. Seems kind of insane. So I got all the water doodads built, and... At some point, we'll have to come finish this. I don't think there's a point in finishing it right this second because I don't have the power shards needed. So, that's a thing. But it probably wouldn't hurt to build a couple of the plants. Is that the spacing, or is it one more in? It hangs over such that that little black one. Let's see. Yeah, it's one more like that, I think. I'll make sure it's exactly the same. So that's in line with that little bar. Yeah, yeah, that's the same. Okay, so we'll get all that hooked up. Again, there's not too much of a point right now because I don't have all the power shards, but I also expanded the waste depot just a little bit. Um, so now I've got 32 hours worth of storage once all 12 are running at full. So that's pretty great. And, you know... It wouldn't take me that long to add another 32 hours of storage if I really needed to. And I did do the math last night, because I was curious, about the radiation distance. And even if all of those are full, it won't even get to the shore over here. So we're fine on radiation distance. Um, the way the math works out, it pretty quickly will get to like two or 300 meters. And if you're doing like plutonium waste or a lot of waste, it, it'll maybe get to four or 500 meters, but it's really, really, really hard to get the amount of radiation past like 600 meters because it, it's exponential, the amount of radiation you need to go like damaging past 600 meters. I mean, it's exponential the whole time, but what I'm trying to say is the exponential part of the graph really takes over around 600. So, you know, it would take you like if it took you 10 hours to get to 600 meters of distance, it would probably take you 500 hours to get to 700 meters. And then, you know, a billion hours or something to get to 800 meters. Maybe not literally a billion, but maybe a million hours. I'm not even kidding. It's absurd how much radiation you need to get to 800 meters. Uh, Alor, it is both. So the, the formula scales inversely with the square of the distance and with an e to the power of the distance. So you end up with both a, it's kind of quadratic at first because those are the bigger numbers and then eventually it's the exponential that really takes over. So you would basically have to cheat in billions of plutonium waste to get past like eight or 900 meters 
of radiation distance. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we're going to be working on power shards, I think. No, I need to do the fixite things first. Right, right, right. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Okay, that's why we got the Caterium. So the Caterium's over here, and it's conveniently just chilling right there. You know, it would be better if this was on the other side. Um, can you like hot swap these <laughs> to go in the other direction? I guess I can wait for the train to leave and then rebuild it. Yes, most of the time, people do say the wrong math words, but given my occupation as a math teacher, I'm prone to at least try to say the correct math word when I can. <laughs> I still make plenty of mistakes with that, but in this case, it is in fact exponential. It's also quadratic, so it's kind of both. But certainly it's the exponential one that wins in the long run. All right, so we're gonna remove you switch it and there's a dismantle box that we just placed somewhere where's the dismantle box ah right here oh god all right trash that trash that i know i just trashed an absurd amount of caterium but it doesn't really matter because i'm not even using it yet Yeah, I mean, when most people say exponential, it's probably close enough to being true that it's not going to matter too much. But when precision matters, exponential is not a word that should be used lightly because it means some very big numbers very quickly. All right. Uh, Vatamouse, I believe it doesn't, and that's actually something people have been requesting already. So I'm pretty sure that's a good indicator that it doesn't exist because people are asking for it. <laughs> so if it existed, I don't think people would be asking for it. Uh, blueprints. I need to remake my blueprint. I am so freaking tired of this. I'm finally going to do it. We're going to blueprint designer mark one. We're going to load up the smelters. And we're going to rename it to mark five after upgrading all the lifts. Well, not just the lifts, but also the lifts. Wait, what? Oh, that was weird. Okay, step one, two, we're done. I should grab my hover pack. It's so nice. One other thing about the hover pack that I have failed to note before is that it gives you a much further interaction distance. Look at this. So you can paste settings to buildings uh, a lot better and you can, you know, like select buildings from a lot further away. So that's a really nice thing about the hover pack. That you should do. Okay, that should do it. I think, yep, no more EIBs. Mark five. Uh, constructor, I should probably redo. That's not one. I like how I called it fixed when it is indeed broken. <laughs> and the, and it's a mixture of Mark four and Mark three belts. This is such a train wreck of a blueprint. I don't know what I was. I don't know what I was doing. But we should be able to get it all upgraded. Okay, now the issue is that we're going to have to redo all the mergers because, well, I guess technically no, because they're Mark three belts, which is 240, right? Like, when is a constructor going to make more than 240 a minute? But you never know. I just don't want to take my chances. You know, steel screws with power shards or something. 
might screw that up. Go merger. business decisions. Oh yes, for the merger in April. It is kind of nice that you can just like double click on the sides and it just hashtag works. Also, these are not connected anymore because I deconstructed it. And now is when it gets painful. Yeah. So the workaround is probably clipping a stackable to here maybe I'm not sure if this is the right spot or not but let's find out um, and then we go down from there yeah that works and then we'll have to remove those stackables including that one there we go Nudge the lift in place, but then it won't connect. The problem is it, it needs to connect in both places. Because you can't... Uh, yeah, because if you were to build the merger onto the end of the lift, on the bottom, I don't think that it spaces it the same. I'm not sure, though. But, like, if you had the lift already there... Yeah, the problem is it builds it, like, on top of it. Which I don't like the look of. It's not... Nothing, nothing technically wrong with it, but but then it does that weird snap. Uh, famous last words of it just works, which is catastrophic when it doesn't. Yeah, you know, things break, it's fine. That's half of a factory game is debugging the factory. All right, so this is Constructors X8 Mark V. I won't put fixed because it's the only Mark V version. And then, do I need anything else? Mm. Um, I probably should do the manufacturer's one. Oh, it's the wrong, wrong mark. Load manufacturers. I could also do refineries with Mark II pipes and the better belts. That could be a thing. But. Whoa! Ran out of power. I could just remove that stackable now that I think about it. That one's not really doing anything anymore. Um, but it's not broke, so let's not fix it. I think that does it. Everything looks pretty Mark V to me, including the ends. Now we have the hard work to do of rearranging all of our old ones. I know they're they're in the Mark III category. We'll just call that the old Mark category. Chuckers X8 Mark V is the only one I care about. <sighs> right, you can't just drag it in. You have to drag it in and then drag it to a section. Right, right, right. What's up, Jacob? Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> All right, so I need smelters and constructors. No, just smelters. What makes the fixite ingots? Is it foundries? Converters. So that means I need a converter recipe. 
Cool. Time to do a new or a recipe. I meant to say blueprint. I don't know why I said recipe. How many of these bad boys can fit? Two? Maybe three? No, not three. It looks like you could fit three in the Mark III blueprint designer, because these are exactly... These are exactly two by two. So you could fit three of them. And... Yeah, this is a fairly simple... Just do our normal, normal shebang. Three tall. Uh, how many hours do I have on this save? Just about a hundred. I think I'm pretty close to having a hundred. Like, I think I'm at 95 or something. I've done quite a bit of off camera work on this save. Some of it has been more useless stuff, like running around, exploring. I, that's not useless, but you know, less good for content at least. And some of it's been, um, you know, like building aesthetic stuff. Some of it's been researching alternate recipes or just looking at the game because it's beautiful, you know, all that kind of good stuff. I know previously I've been removing these little holes, but you know what? I just can't be bothered. It does make the blueprint more expensive, though, for no reason. Maybe I should remove them. I'll try to stay consistent. I'm, I've still resisted the spaghetti monster thus far. Uh, not completely, but as far as Crydax standards go, I've resisted the spaghetti monster for a while now. Come on. You're still betting on Final Pasta? Yeah, it's like Final Destination. Final Pasta Nation. Just, it just makes sense. It'll happen. All right, so that's good. Yeah, Waskily, I, I just don't like the way it looks. Because it, it feels weird to for the items to be coming, like, like, into... They're, like, coming into the side of the bottom, and it, you even can see the clipping. Like, you can see the models overlapping. I don't know. It's not terrible, so I totally get that some people really like it. But for whatever reason, it just feels wrong to me. Maybe I'm just old man shaking my fist at the clouds, because... I don't know. For no reason. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll, I'll switch over to using it. But I, li I, like, I like the items coming up and into the side for whatever reason. All right, so then we're gonna need the fluid to be this one. Always keep the fluid as low as possible. So, we do that, and then what are the odds it just snaps? It does. Even the vertical version snaps? Oh, but this one doesn't. Of course this one doesn't, and that one does. <laughs> the vertical, s or the, the junction snapping has to be the jankiest thing of all time. Oh, but the splitter worked that time. I'm thinking this isn't gonna work though, so I don't know why I did it twice. Yeah, that's a little too. A little too problematic. Um, so I could go one higher. What about the angle? Oh, the angle doesn't actually work. So I might just settle for one of these situations again. I do actually think that looks kind of cool, to be honest. All right, and which way are the items coming in? Back left, so they go out this way. There's only one item, so I went too high here. And then we do the same thing. Come out three, deconstruct those. Build 
the lift, snap the merger, deconstruct the lift, reconstruct the lift, make sure there's no arrows, and we're good to go, deconstruct the back end, and get power. Where's the power connection on you guys? Power is right here, eh? Right where you want to clip with everything. I might be able to get a power line across this area, though. This feels kind of hopeful. Yeah. Yeah, Alor, I'm. I've thought about that a few times where I'm like, especially when the merger's next to a junction, it's even worse, like this. Um, I like to just think that, you know, the pipe is actually, like, this is just like hanging on to the pipe, you know? It's like the merger's built with a little U shaped kind of saddle that it sits on top of the pipe. That, that's how I'm thinking. Yeah, exactly. I'm huffing some copium here but that's how I'm thinking about it. <laughs> All right, blueprint, converters, X2, Mark V, P2. I, why am I calling it pipe? I would always use Mark II pipes at this point in the game. There's no reason to name it P2. Unless there's a third tier of pipe that somehow I don't know about. All right, so that's done. Cool, cool, cool. And now... Uh-oh. Oh gosh, what is going on here? Um... Oh, I know what was going on. I need to go plop some stuff into the research. I have all these supercomputers in my inventory. Ah, uh, just let your PC overheat. I'm sure, sure it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I would not let Satisfactory run overnight. <laughs> Somehow that just feels very wrong. So I have all these extra ECRs. I guess I can just sync them. What are we at? Eight coupons right now? At this point, if I don't automate a new expensive thing to be sunk regularly, I'm not going to get many coupons. Because all that I have are... Uh, it's like oil byproduct stuff. Computers. All right, so now I just need a hundred trigons. Which we are very close to having. It was an accident, I swear. <laughs> um, it wasn't me, officer. Now you're not set to unload. That's the problem. I was gonna say that should have Caterium by now. Okay, so now I have a fancy new blueprint for smelters, and we're gonna make Caterium here. How many do I need? Three? And start with two. And then we're gonna need... What was it? I need converters. And I'm gonna do this recipe. And then we're gonna have... Trigons made in constructors. Okay. Blueprints, converters. Line this 
Uh, like so. How many do I need? I don't know. Let's start with four. Yeah, Waskly, we'll see. Pasta could be a good one. Um, the problem is I still might be doing my feed it with containers method. <laughs> we'll see. I'll, I'll calculate the numbers and depending on how bad they are, I might, I might just do that method. We'll, uh, let's see. See how ugly that gets. Because I made a hundred pasta and it wasn't that bad. So is a thousand really that much worse? <laughs> Teus, that's great. Uh, post it in the Discord. I, uh, I'm going to look back on that one. It was a pretty good hit. I was impressed. I think I got it in the leg. I thought I had missed it first, but then it clearly did not like what happened. A strange beast. Or whatever it's called. Um, let's see. CC, yes, they did add crafted power shards. Which I think was a good move because in the late game, there are just so many things you want to power shard, and now you're not, ah! Now you're not restricted to just only having, you know, however many hundred you can find. This way it also doesn't punish players for not production amplifying them from the beginning. Because that's also a thing that would now be the case. Because you can double the power shards that you production amplify, but what if... Like me, you didn't know you could production amplify them, and you just assumed you couldn't. Because like in Factorio, you can't productivity module certain things. And my brain just incorrectly assumed it was a similar situation here. So, um, yeah, that looks a little wonky, actually, to do the straight mode. And then this is going to be the whatchamacallits. So now we just pull whatchamacallits off the bus. Yeah, I should start stockpiling copper powder. Um, maybe... Because last time, one container... Because I already have this set up. Uh, one container was enough for... One. So five industrial storage containers should be enough for... And we'll do it the correct way. <laughs> this is so bad. Oh, uh, you gotta, you gotta have some fun, you know. Uh, wait. I think. No, something, something went wrong. That way, that way, that way, okay. I think it was automatically flipping them and then I was flipping them on top of its flip. There we go. So we call this the copper tower, the powder, the powder tower. And when this is full, we will have enough copper powder for our pasta. <laughs> will it ever be full? I'm not sure. We will find out. That might actually take too long to fill. Because if that constructor's go... What was that? We can do the math real quick. Was it 250 a minute? And that's assuming it's getting all the copper at once, which it is not. Um, ooh, spiral the belts around. Only if it looks good. Only if it looks good. Um, oh, but I here, I have to, I have to test. They have to face the same way for this. 
It does look good. Oh, that actually looks really good. We're doing it that way. It does look very good to do it this way. There we go. There's the experience we want our copper powder to have. <laughs> Look, it's like a really clean and small version of what uh, Let's Game It Out would do on any given day. So, this is nothing. He would go about 50 times bigger and 50 times messier. Speaking of storage, how's the nuclear waste doing? Um, I'm sure it's fine. We timed it. I have 32 hours of storage when I'm doing all 12 nuclear reactors fully power sharded. So, I'm nowhere near having any issues with that. Um, anyway, I need to bring over... Ugh, I need to do another section of the bus is what we have to do. Blueprints. Bus. Mark 5. Let's go. Yeah, that feels about right. And now we get to do some connection. Potentially run out of all clad aluminum sheets while we're in the process. Good news is I just need this item right here. Sometimes if you're holding control to multi-deconstruct, you can get really unfortunate with some of the things you're aiming at behind the thing you're trying to deconstruct. Um, maybe... Yeah. Can I just go directly up there? That'll look a lot better. At that point, why don't I just do this? That'll look a lot better. Oh, it's still not the right height, though. Uh, the plan to upgrade to Mark VI belts is when when I need something with more than 780 per minute. I'll only upgrade what I need to. And, I don't know, depending on my total production of fix site. I may have enough to just make my blueprints mark six. Probably will. I'm definitely gonna gonna sloop it for a while. Okay. So now we just need to hook up power. Which we will go with floor power. Do it! Yes! Ooh, this this feels like the uh feels like the screenshot for the episode right here. Pretty good one. Alright, alright, alright. So now what? Now I need Uh, constructor set to make turn the ingots into trigons. Okay, and then I might do that. Well, what are my rates here? This is going to be eating 240. Um, two forty caterium a minute, which is two forty times three ore. So that's almost a full belt of ore. That's seven hundred and 
20. But once I get a Mark VI belt, I'll be able to fit a bit more. So I'll leave room to expand to two more converters over here if we want. And we'll just do our constructors here. Spacing and that should do it. Trigons be trigons. So, okay, I have to explain that joke. I mean, it's not really a joke, it's more of a reference. But, uh, so I enjoy Magic the Gathering uh, as a card game, strategy game, it's pretty great, highly recommend it if you're into that sort of thing. And there is a I'm doing a lot of skipping the explanation, but there's a format called Vintage Cube, which uses a bunch of old cards. And for a while, there was a card in the Vintage Cube called Trigon, but T-R-Y-G-O-N. Um, and it was a creature that would destroy artifacts when attacking or whatever. And uh, it was mediocre. But all that to say, there was uh, one Christmas where a bunch of people who were playing the Vintage Cube put together like a bingo card where when you would like play the vintage cube, you would like check off things as you got them. And one of the, one of the like bingo achievements was like let trigons be trigons. And you had to like draft the trigon card and, and use it. So anyway, that that's uh, why the word trigon rolls around in my head whenever, or trigons be trigons rolls around in my head every time I see the word. Now, what I'm considering is sloopaging here because I get a free 75 a minute from a single sloop here. That's a lot of Fixite Trigons. So it's possible that I shut down a lot of these constructors and just sloop maybe like two of them. And then I've doubled my Fixite production, uh, which is pretty good. Currently I'm making, do I even have enough reanimated Sam for this? 180 Sam quadrupled is almost all of my Sam. So, and that's only 60 Fixite ingots. So this would use almost half of what I'm making here. So yeah, I'm going to sloop two of them, and I'm going to shut the rest down for now. We can come back later and modify things. I want to, but... For now, I'll go with double production seems pretty good and then we need a storage container or I guess a depot storage container up top. <gasps> what are the odds that actually clips together or like snaps together, I should say. And now I have a splitter so I can bring these back to the bus or somewhere useful. Well, it was just exciting that that lift happened to snap at that perfect 90 degree angle. Man. How could it not be excited? All right, so we got Trigons. Nice, so I should be able to go finish that research then. Okay, these are really bothering me because they make it so that hitting one doesn't equip my uh, hover pack or jet pack. <laughs> the equipment moves around on you when you grab berries. All right, get out of here. Now, one thing I am excited for with Mark VI belts is how flippin' fast we're gonna fly fancy-free throughout the foliage. Uh, can't think of more Fs. There we go. Kachunk. Quantum encoding. Milestone reached. This is not a competition, but other pioneers, such as 83CKY and U5313555, had already completed project assembly by this point. No 8008. Dixon was obviously wrong about you, but perhaps so Pioneer. was I. 
Regardless, you have finally unlocked the quantum encoder, which requires vast fluctuating power and excited photonic matter to produce highly complex parts. Do not make the same mistakes managing the resulting dark matter residue as you did other byproducts. Hey now! Project part number 11, I've done the great AI with expansion server, is now your highest priority. Galaxy-wide project management is taxing to even the most advanced among us, especially those who have to manage the less advanced. Like kittens, and puppies, kittens. who are definitely still waiting for you to save them. Oh, come on. I've saved many kittens by now. Alright, so we still need the neural quantum processors, which are basically super, super computers, uh, for the Blueprint Designer Mark III. And then Singularity Cells show up in here, and then this is what we want next. So this one requires a metric crap ton of iron. So let me grab what we've got. And I might speed up. I guess that won't speed it up. It's still only 60 minutes. All right, it might take a little bit. I might have to make some extra iron for this. Oh, I can't put it in until the pod comes back in 20 minutes. Whoops. Whoopsies. All right, well, I meant to do that a while ago because I knew this moment was coming. Um, also, this Caterium is slow. I think I need to upgrade that to a Mark III Miner. But how is my fuel delivering? A little slow, it seems. Yeah, I guess I'm only making like 60 a minute. It's not quite, am I not making 60 turbo fuel? Uh, looks like I'm a little under, okay. Well, that being the case, let's figure out how to make some power shards. Quantum encoder. So it's kind of like a particle accelerator. It's a variable power cost. And it's a long, skinny boy. Wow, that is a long boy. Um, three, four, five. Does that even fit? It, does it just barely fit in the mark? Probably just barely fits in the bigger blueprint designer. Because that would be like the very front edge and it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, it, it literally just barely fits to the point where you can't even blueprint the inputs and outputs and stuff. That's annoying. Um, Cause it, yeah, literally anything right there would be outside the blueprint. So you can't really blueprint these blueprint two of them next to each other with power attachments and at least for this one you could have the belts going over the top and these two could be attached but those two you'd have to attach afterwards so that's probably what i'll end up doing yeah a lore it's it's got to be intentional i don't totally comprehend why but yeah it clearly is meant to be so big you can't blueprint it fully okay so the synthetic power shards Ooh, it's got little flashy lights that's cool uh no Teus, the six by six by six which we still haven't quite unlocked is the biggest so i need time crystals dark matter crystals quartz crystals and excited photonic matter now the photonic matter is just literally matter. It's free. We'll call it air. We excite the air and we get it for free. It just costs some power. So that's easy. Um, this machine is the apple of discord. It just suggests to abandon blueprints and do, do pasta. Yeah, we knew I was gonna get to pasta eventually, right? Okay, so I need the photonic matter 
And we get the dark matter residue out. And then I need, sorry, my neck is killing me. I need some time crystals. We need dark matter crystals. How do I make those? Those are particle accelerated diamonds. They're dark matter diamonds, basically. So then that means I need to make dark matter originally from reanimated Sam. But then I'll have byproduct dark matter. I see. I see. This all gets complicated. Okay. So let's start with dark crystals. Uh, yeah, let's do that. So the dark matter crystals, I already forgot where they're made. Um, no, I'll start with dark matter residue production. Okay, yeah, we'll start with that. So blueprints, converters, I will do dark matter residue production here. We'll just line it up with that. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, so this will make dark matter residue. And that needs the reanimated Sam, which I could bring from over here. And I think I will, rather than grabbing it off the bus again. sitting everywhere. Okay, so there's reanimated Sam. Make dark matter residue. More like residont. I take no legal responsibility for that joke. Okay, so this will get it started, basically. Uh, I'm not touching anything. I don't. Uh, I think it's kind of glitched out there. Like it got locked doing the spacebar input there. Okay, so this is dark matter residue in case I run out from my other byproduct residue, basically. So there's that. Then we need. dark matter crystals which are made in the particle accelerators and those are basically diamonds of which I only have 30 a minute one day I might have more than that so for now I don't need too much more but I think I'll actually from this one? Is that? Well, that's not lined up. There we go, that's lined up. I think I'll put this guy over here. You're gonna make the dark matter crystals. You will be slooped for a bit. Super slooped. And then the dork matter. Nicely, any yeah, you know sometimes noodle is your savior. Sometimes noodle is the savior. Okay, so there's the dark meta, and then this is the splitter. They're basically designed for this exact thing. 
Diamonds are one of the things that would be reasonable to build off-site. You know, you find an area with either a bunch of oil or coal or both because we have the petroleum coke diamonds. There's also crude oil diamonds, but I think petroleum coke diamonds is better. And there's turbo diamonds. I forgot about that. In fact, turbo diamonds are probably the best, but then you need some sulfur in there. Um, yeah. But the petroleum coke diamonds are actually relatively cheap. You only need eight heavy oil residue per diamond, which is only six crude oil per diamond. So... You could do 100 diamonds a minute off of one pipeline. You know, Mark II pipeline. That's really not that bad. Really not that bad. But hey, we got dark matter crystals. Can you just, like, sit inside of this? This feels dangerous. Is this dangerous? Seems like this would be dangerous. I guess it's keeping the, the particles in the little rings, but <laughs> that seems like it should be dangerous. Uh, okay, so now I just need a quantum encoder. Oh my god, I hate this thing. I hate it so much. It's so long! That's definitely not what she said. Uh, dark matter crystal, time crystal. Oh, I'm not making time crystals. I already forget, are time crystals just the constructor? No, those are made in converters too. You have to convert diamonds. I need a lot of diamonds. So let's copy this guy. Time crystals. I I like tier nine, um, and it also kind of feels like they just made up random fancy sounding words and threw them at a wall. <laughs> like like ooh, time crystals, dark energy, photonic matter. You know, it's just like all these different fancy words. I believe Snut said they all have some some sort of foundation in reality. Like, they didn't just completely make stuff up. Um, but to a lay person, they, they all sound pretty sci-fi. Alright, so these guys are now good to go. I gotta say, when you've got some nice blueprints and plenty of space to build, and you've got a method to the madness like we do with our bus, things do go pretty fast. Because we're not having to worry about ratios. Everything's gonna be starved for diamonds, sure, but it is gonna work. Um, okay. Now we're almost there. I think we are there, right? Quartz crystals. I need some of the photonic matter, which is free to make. Sweet. And then I bring in the time crystals and the dark crystals. All right, let's carry the bus along a little bit here before I get too far into this. trying to decide if I want, like, excited photonic matter on the bus, or not so much. And I can make it wherever I want, so it's hard to argue that it should go on the bus. Dark matter residue, same story, I feel like it's kind of, I don't know. I do have an empty pipe here, pipe number three. 
I kind of thought that was going to be sulfuric acid, but I haven't needed sulfuric acid yet, except in a couple of places where it's looped around for itself. But, uh... But yeah, there's time crystals, and dark crystals are going to be over here. Let's do something like this. crystals and photonic meta. Good golly, this building. I like it, but I also hate it. <laughs> it's so long. Um, yeah, I will probably d blueprint something with it eventually. For now, I don't really need a blueprint because I just have the one thing I need. I certainly am not going to have enough resources to provide uh, more than one building's worth. Okay, so then we need to pull quartz crystals off of us. Where are those bad boys? This belt. fix it, believe it or not. There we go. Alright, we got all the crystals. Uh, I mean, this is basically just crystal town. Power shards are just all the crystals. You get a bunch of crystals together, you get them real excited, you have a party, and boom, you got a power shard. Is that easy? Maybe you got a power shard stew going. A crystal stew. Um, well, I don't know why I thought something other than floor power was going to be useful. Floor power is the truth. By the way, if your nudging is too much, you can do control nudge. And it's great. All right, we're powered up. And now we just need that photonic matter, which build right here. No real reason to build it too far away. It makes more than enough. Here we go! Free power! Shards! And I could sloop it too for a little while. Um, the problem is the dark matter residue, right? And so that's going to start building up. So what we have to do is we have to bring that over to here and use that to make our dark matter crystals. So what we're going to do is I'm going to reset the head lift here. And then we're going to 
have this. And then I'm gonna need some sort of Call it. Special organization. There you are. A little bit buffer. Put down in that. I think a valve might help, but I don't know if it matters. Crazy whooshy noises going, I will say. Still have to do the old the old methods to get pipes to go at right angles or semi right angles. I guess I was off by one there. I like how everything sounds like it's lifting off. Everything sounds like it's spinning up and lifting off and ex not exploding, but almost exploding. Alright, I think that... Oh, this doesn't have head lift. That could be problematic. Does it still act the same way, though? No, I don't think it does. Um, I don't actually know... Yeah, yeah, I, I know that it's a gas now. I just kind of forgot about the fact that it's a gas. Um, I don't know if non... I don't know if the gassy things work the same way with pressure. Or not. It might not. In which case, we could have a... So, you need five DMR to make a crystal, and then you need two crystals, which then makes 12 DMR when you only need it. So you end up with two extra DMR per power shard, um, assuming you're not slooping things. I am slooping things, which means I'm actually getting seven excess DMR. So I don't even need... Yeah, that's basically what I'm wondering, Alor. How do you do priority input if it's not a liquid? And I don't actually know if it's the same or not. But in this case, I literally don't even need any of this. I actually have too much byproduct, and it's going to jam up. Even with just the byproduct. So, in this case, I'm going to end up with essentially too many dark matter crystals. Um, which are used to make superposition oscillators, and that will net you even more dark matter residue. Yeah, I'll probably just sink the excess. The problem with that, though, is then I'm always burning diamonds, which I don't love. Because uh, always burning diamonds means... Well, I don't have a lot of diamonds. <laughs> so I'm probably going to need some extra coal. We will have Mark 6 belts soon, so I'll wait to deal with that until our Mark 6 belt. For now... Let's do the thing that we've been excited about doing since 100 hours ago when we started this save. 
Infinite flipping power shards, baby. Well, they're all in here now, but there it is. It'll take a while to build up, to be sure, but it is infinite power shards. That's awesome. And I will probably sloop that for now. Uh, we're going to have way too much dark matter residue. gonna desloop this and then we will just smart splitter I don't love this solution but it does work sink our extra... Uh, that's not working. That's because I need to do... Overflow. There we go. Nice. How's power holding up? Uh, probably fine. Yeah, we're, we're doing good. The orange line is our actual consumption, the gray is our capacity, so we are still more than fine. And we have to shard all of our nuclear stuff, so we still have a lot more power coming. But yeah, why don't I... Why don't I go check on the iron? I may need to produce some extra plates here. I want to get Mark 6 belts, and then we can get more coal. Alright, iron. Oh, we're actually a good, good portion of the way there. Sixty-four hundred, okay. Trigons. And then all clads, I'm going to need to go grab manually. Which are over here somewhere. I think they're one of these two, yeah. Uh, no, the power draw is not synced for particle accelerators. So if you were having them constantly running, you would want to offset them so you don't have huge spikes and valleys in your power grid. At the end of the day, they'll probably average out just through natural gameplay, but you can see there's some big spikes. And if you were to have two that were on the same cycle, at least particle accelerators ramp up from start to finish. I don't know what the other buildings do. They don't have the same pattern. So I'm going to go with the method of ignoring all of it and hoping it all works out. That's never failed me before. <laughs> uh, he says with sarcasm. Um, encoders bounce all over the place, yeah. And the converters do something weird, too. They, all three of those buildings do weird power stuff. So I need more iron. Did I not just grab more iron? I still need a, quite a bit more, I guess. Um, I just have to wait a few minutes. There is more iron plateage in the base where we're making reinforced plates. Ah! Whoa! We should have iron plates somewhere over here. Correctly. Yeah, so I can grab a few more here from these buffers. 
was an easy 1600. In fact, I should be able to grab from the assemblers, too. There's 2200, and another six. That's 2800. That gets me most of the way there. Most of the way. It's still funny to me that you, you can jump in the completely wrong direction and still end up going <laughs> very fast in the direction you want to go. Alright, let's see if all this is enough. Not enough iron plates? Maybe, maybe? No! <laughs> We're so close! I just need 200. That was actually surprisingly close to what we needed. Um, I am making reinforced plates somewhere on this floor. You. Yeah, there it is. That is what we need. Alright. Boom. Yes! Mark 6 belts! Milestone reached. After close scrutiny, two problems were identified yeah, they in were. Mark 5 conveyor belts. The first was the belt part, so force fields have been implemented in the Mark VI instead, to maximize transfer speeds. The second problem is inefficient pioneers, but sadly no remedy is available for this severe impediment. Whoa. Yet. Oh my goodness. Okay, that I was not expecting. It costs time crystals too? Not just trigons? Oh jeez. Okay, I wasn't expecting the time crystal cost. I was expecting the trigon cost. Uh, we're definitely gonna need more diamonds then. Wow. Alright, well let's head to our coal mine over here. And see what we can rummage up in terms of better rates. Yeah, I thought it was just gonna be the trigons. Every single belt prior to Mark VI only cost one resource. And it's always like the basic building resource. So that was a bit of a surprise. Over here. Uh, tier 5 takes bauxite and coal. What? Well, I, sorry, I don't mean two ores. I mean, like, two materials to build the belt. Like, these only take all clad aluminum sheets. So it goes iron plates, uh, reinforced iron plates, steel beams, encased industrial beams, all clad aluminum sheets, and I assumed it was then just going to be trigons. But it's trigons plus time crystals for every, you know, meter or how many meters of the belt. Anyway, I digress. Let's at least mark five of five this. be able to eventually mark six by it. does go on a lot of magical journeying. I think it's this version that then goes to the bus. Oh my gosh. And kids, this is why you don't do a bus. Funny is we haven't even gotten to the bus yet. Okay, nice. This will give us a lot more coal. Ah, stuck. There. To the 
this one. It's this guy. going on here it's like a, a belt that's really long but not really long Yeah, I don't know. Those are both splitters, though, so we're okay. Keep going. Actually, more spaghetti than I thought. Yeah, so, I, you know, in the early game, I wasn't doing a bus before I had blueprints, and I didn't, like, go back and tear down the old base. I just kept it. So, like, right now, my encased industrial beams that I build with are still coming from the same... The same in cut in the encased industrial beam plant that I set up originally. Same with reinforced iron plates. Those are still the OG. Uh, which one's coal? You. This is nuts. Part of me wonders if I should have just... Yeah, Waskly, I probably will do coal on the train eventually, if I really still don't have enough diamonds. I should have made this a tier 6. I should have just waited until I had enough tier 6 materials. <laughs> I don't want to do this again with tier 6. Oh, goodness. And the chance that I missed a belt somewhere is slowly increasing. At least everything after this, I think, is Mark V. Yeah. So. Should be more coal in total. Let's see if it's moving at full speed down here. Um, this one. No, it's getting stuck on something. Okay, we missed one somewhere. Oh, is it right here? No, no, I don't think it's right there. This is Mark 5. This is Mark 5. I rebuilt that section between the two. This is all Mark 5. It's not going at Mark 5 speeds right there. So the issue is somewhere before here. Huh, issue is in here somewhere maybe. But that's a Mark 5. This splitter doesn't even need to exist, but... That shouldn't have mattered. Weird. Something 
janky was going on in there. Okay, now that just slowed down again, though. So that leads me to believe there's another Mark IV slowdown somewhere along this line. You remain unconvinced that my super compact building style is actually a good idea. Uh, I mean, it does cert ah, oh, it's right here. That was that was it. It does certainly help uh, to not have to build. If you're going for aesthetic looking buildings, obviously being able to produce the actual factory part of it in a more compact frame is helpful because then you don't need to build your aesthetic buildings as big. I kind of gave up on that at this point where I was like, I'm tired of doing floors and or walls and ceilings and stuff and I'm just going to go with the big, the big flat land. Um, and yeah, obviously if you're just doing big flat land, then it becomes less necessary to to do that. Okay, I think we're good now. But yeah, that's gonna be, I'm gonna have to do that again with Mark VI to get all the diamonds. But yeah, it also means the last thing we should do in this episode, because we're at an hour and 36 minutes for the YouTube recording, as usual. Uh, the last thing I need to do is put time crystals in. In a, uh, container with dimensional depot access. Yeah, Wooza, I think I'm I'm probably going to make some uh some diamonds off site. Especially now that I do have some more drone setups available, it's not going to be a huge hassle to set up some extra drones. So It also could be worth, now that I know I need a lot of time crystals, at least for now it could be worth slipping them. So we get a few more. Um... So now I'm going to get the same amount towards shards, but half of them are going towards building. Now, standing here certainly can't be safe. <laughs> Whatever that beam is, just inches away from my feet. Encoding quantum realities onto my little toes. That can't be safe. OSHA would not be pleased. Uh, but yeah. should do it. I guess we still have the question of dark matter residue. Because I'm only getting 30 diamonds a minute in the first place. So I'm going to ramp that back up to 100% speed. That should use up all of our coal, pretty much. Beautiful. All right, sweet. Well, I think we will call it a YouTube episode there. I'm going to keep streaming, so if you're here live, don't leave. I'll, I'm staying. The outro thing is just for the, the future YouTubians. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, I am pretty pleased with infinite power shards. So on the list to do here is... I don't need any of these notes anymore. That was for the control rod stuff. So on the list here is finish nuclear power plant because we still need the other uh, doodads. Potentially get more diamonds, question mark? And maybe make more rubber, also question mark, because I've needed more rubber for a long time and haven't done it. So that could be a thing I do. Um, but yeah, more diamonds is probably gonna be necessary. So I might do that. But yeah, we'll uh, call it an episode there. As always, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments and I'll see you in the next episode.